Welcome to the Library of Virginia. I'm Mary Julian, one of the curators of our exhibition, We Demand Women's Suffrage in Virginia, which opened earlier this year as part of the library's centennial celebration of the ratification of the 19th Amendment guaranteeing women's voting rights. Since the library is closed, we wanted to bring some parts of the exhibition to you. The item I want to talk about today was loaned to us by the granddaughter of suffrage activist Ma Jameson. Maud was born in 1890 and grew up in Norfolk, where she began working as a public school teacher about 1909. When she was in her early 20s, she got involved in the movement for women's voting rights. Her hometown newspaper described Maud as taking, quote, a leading part in every suffrage movement inaugurated here. She first joined the Equal Suffrage League of Norfolk, which was then working to convince the General Assembly to amend the state constitution to authorize Virginia women to vote. However, Ma believed that a woman's suffrage amendment to the Constitution of the United States would be the quickest way to win the right to vote, which turned out to be correct when the 19th Amendment was ratified in 1920. In 1915, Ma joined the newly organized Virginia branch of the Congressional Union for Women's Suffrage, which later changed its name to the National Women's Party. The National Women's Party organized large public protests and daily picket lines at the White House, all of which were covered by the national press in the days before social media and viral videos. Maud Jameson embraced the cause wholeheartedly and resigned from teaching to go work in the headquarters of the National Women's Party in Washington, D.C. While she worked there, she used this portable Corona typewriter, which she kept for the rest of her life. I'll admit that I got goosebumps when we opened the box and got to hold the typewriter that Maud had used more than 100 years ago to type letters, office memos, or press releases, while fighting for women's suffrage. But she didn't just work at headquarters. When the National Women's Party organized its picket lines in January 1917, Maud was one of the first volunteers. She regularly stood outside the White House gates with banners asking, Mr. President, how long must women wait for liberty? And what will you do for women's suffrage? The women on the picket line were known as silent sentinels and were trained to not respond to taunts and threats from opponents. In June, after the United States had entered World War I, some opponents saw the pickets as treasonous and began attacking the women and tearing banners away from them. The police didn't arrest the rioters, they arrested the peaceful women, usually charging them with obstructing traffic, even though they were on the sidewalk and not blocking traffic or pedestrians. Ma Jameson was among the first group of pickets arrested, and she was probably arrested more than any other Virginia suffragist, at least seven times and maybe as many as a dozen. Like the other pickets, she refused to pay a fine, and so was sent to the District of Columbia's workhouse in Lorton, Virginia, on the Occoquan River, where the women endured inedible food, unsanitary conditions, and sometimes faced violent treatment. Maud's sister wouldn't send her fried chicken, but it was probably eaten by the prison guards, since they often didn't let the suffragists have their mail, or visitors, or even a toothbrush. So in this typewriter, I see Ma Jameson's persistence and devotion to the cause of voting rights for women. Her willingness to leave her home and job, to stand on the picket lines, and to face arrest and imprisonment for her belief that women deserve the right to vote. When the library is open again, I hope that you'll visit our exhibition and get to see this piece of history for yourself. In the meantime, you can learn more about Ma Jameson and other Virginia suffragists and their fight for voting rights at our website, edu.lva.virginia.gov slash we demand. Thanks for joining us.